A scammer will do anything to gain your trust. They will be charming, charismatic. They will help you. They will say they'll be your savior. Am I making you paranoid? Don't be, but be aware. Look behind you. But don't trust them. Never ever give anybody your passwords or tell them very much about you. Keep your finances private. And even if you know them very well, always be careful. Don't trust them. They cannot be your savior. Only you can be. It's a billet do, not a billet de. We're here today to talk to Amanda about all the men who've managed to steal significant amounts of money from her, but in particular, one terrible scammer. Uh, now, this all happened about two or three years ago. Do you want to well, tell it, me it what happened Well, it happened in happened about, first? about 2000, I suppose from 2016 to 2020. Four years? Yes. And explain what happened. Okay, I was being nagged because, you know, I needed to learn about money. And of course I hadn't learned about money because I've been married for 20 years. But in any case, I've been with somebody all my life and he was brilliant with money, but I wasn't necessarily good with money. So I wanted to learn about it. And in learning, I had a huge problem because I came across several people that it were excessively charming. You should always beware the charming person. When you say you came across them, what, you met them on the internet? And usually on the internet. What, were they all get-rich-quick schemes? I don't know if they were get-rich-quick schemes, but I would say you have to be an excessively good trader to make the sort of money I was making, because I did make quite a lot of money for a year or two. So explain how, what happened. The company, which I'm not allowed to mention, was out of Cyprus. There are a lot right. of foreign exchange scammers out of Cyprus. I was Try trading. Play the foreign exchange. Yes, market. exactly. Okay. And I really loved it and I made quite a lot of money. I thought, well, I had to learn about money. So what I did was I wrote, how do you make money on, on the internet? And um, up popped this company and they said they would teach me. And then this very charming man rang me and said he would help me. And he kept ringing me. And every day he would call me and say, how are you today? Or, and I said, I wouldn't invest any money until I would go over to Cyprus to meet them. Pristine. But were you amused by this man or uh, charmed? I or? was absolutely charmed. By the, by the time I went over there, to check him out and check the company out, I was completely charmed by him. So you were expecting it to work out even before you went to check it out? I don't know. I always thought in the back of my head it was all too good to be true. Yeah. Um, but like everything, do you think you're being horrible? And in this day of um, political correctness, my second nastiest side of my character stopped working. My uh, scepticism stopped working. Can he spot victims, this chap? Let's call him Benny. I would say he's been perfectly trained by a very, very big scammer who was put away for 25 years in America. So I went over to his office in, in Cyprus. Cyprus, yes. And when I arrived, they picked me up in a uh, limousine. He brought me flowers. I thought, my God, my day has come. And then he took me to was his good, office. Was he a good looking guy? Uh, very pleasant looking. I, w I would have said at the time 40. I was wrong. Did you fancy him? No, funnily enough, I didn't fancy him, but I did like him and we got on very well. So he said, you don't need to worry about money anymore. You can, I'll help you make money and you don't need to worry about anything ever again because I will help you do all these things. And in fact, you took a position on the foreign exchanges. First of all, I went over there. I didn't give him money essentially in no. the beginning. I went to meet him and when I met him, it was a brand new office. I should have been a bit suspicious because it was six o'clock in the evening and it looked a very busy office um, with sort of 50 um, computer stands, which were all empty. You know, it looked like it, it was a set for computers. And there was a sign outside, which was on a chain. I should have been a bit weary about that because although he actually did a skit outside where the plaque was, and said, he this? says he's not going to steal from me. He promises me, don't you, that and you're not going to steal I'm from me. I'm not stealing anything. He always told me, don't talk to anybody else in the office, only talk to me. I don't want you to talk to anybody else. You were in this empty office. Do you think they just borrowed it? Do you know what's going on there? It's all over the net that that's their office. So it was definitely their office for the time. 
he took me out for dinner. He, d he was very, very correct with me, actually. So for the next year, I reckon I made a probably two and a half million pounds. And how did you make this money? I was just buying and selling whenever he told me to. Currencies, um, yes, only currencies. Yes, currencies, yes. Right. The dollar against the pound. You know, they come in pairs. At the time, you don't think you're gambling, but you're gambling because they change dramatically. And even a tiny percentage alters your position. Mm. And then on top of it, you have to watch these um, currency exchanges and you have to watch the trading because they're all a second or so out of time oh, wow. with the actual trading right. office. So it's a problem because for me personally, I think that's against the law. But they're slightly out, they're about two seconds. So they have time to actually do another trade with your yeah, of money. Of course, of course. Yeah. And then on top of it, nothing is, is really real. You don't know where you put your money in through your credit card onto the platform that you're whatever platform you want and it's a problem with all platforms it's not just the people i used but it was a whole pl problem with platforms in cyprus it's very easy to get conned by these other people especially in cyprus which is tax efficient and all sorts of other things so you you can easily get conned now do was it like a ponzi scheme was it like the sting where they were actually giving you profits that weren't there or were you making real money? Okay, it looked like I was making real money. Yeah. On top of that, I took a lot of money out. I took about 600,000 out. And how did out. he feel about you taking No, he out? never minded. Okay. And then I put it back in. Uh -huh. Okay, so I go in, out, in, out. And in fact, my ex-husband told me to take out money. It was no problem. So right. I did test it. I wasn't stupid. I would have never found this out if I hadn't given him um, a certain amount of money to put on Bitcoin because I thought, yeah. well, I would love to do Bitcoin. So I bought it at £7,000, which I thought. Well, now it trades at about 25000 so yeah. you can calculate yeah. how much 150000 yeah. would be worth. So when that disappeared, I knew I was probably conned on the other side. My name is Cecilia. I'm a friend of Amanda. I'm her hairdresser. We know for a long time. And recently she looked very depressive. So I wonder what's going on. So one day I visit her house and I saw a tear in her eyes and I asked her what's going on. And she told me she lost all her money. Somebody stole her money. First of all, it turns out that you pay for every swap. Is that correct? I don't quite understand. You, you basically have to pay um, a sort of fee for renting the platform. Yeah. That's it, really what it is. Is that what a swap is called as well? Yes. Okay. And they can set whatever rate they like. Yes, and which is what they started to do. And is that illegal? It's, it is illegal, but they did it. Right. And that's why I got some of my money back. Right. So, you said, come on, Benny, let's try Bitcoin. And he said, that's a great idea. Yes, he said it was a great idea. And I just got some money in from a house I'd sold in Los Angeles. And I was happy to give it to him because at the time I'd made, well, I'd made a million in a year. I've taken out enough for my year ahead. And luckily for me, a great friend of mine said, take a bit more out. And I took a bit more out and um, everything went very well. I then had a problem. I was worried about my positions. And they rang me up actually, one of the other people in the office, and they wanted to give me very, very, very heavy positions in currencies. Risky and, or? Yes, I thought they were risky. And they turned out to be. But it was another person in the office. Who was trying to scam you as well? Yes. Two scammers trying to scam yes. each other. Eventually I found out I was scammed. So you bought this Bitcoin, which would have been worth an awful lot if you'd been able to access it, but he had the... Codes and everything. And that's the other thing. If you buy Bitcoin, you must do all your own codes. You must have everything that's pertinent to you, not let anyone else near your things and do it on reputable platforms like Binance. Don't go into anything else, really. So first of all, you'd have this dodgy phone call, then you... Had, by now you still hadn't realised how much they were charging you for swaps. I did, I worried and I used to argue about it all the time. If you remember, you used to speak to Benny all the time and it was very funny. I think I was very taken in by his character. It reminds me of the Tinder swindler, really. It's the same sort of area in the world and they're very similar characters. They almost look identical <laughs> as well. But you actually still quite like Benny, don't you? You think he's got something. 
Well, I thought he was a very talented trader. I think if he had been honest, doing exactly the same thing, all of them would have made more money with me and, and everybody would have been happy. Because after all, but you see, they're not meant to give you trades and they gave me the trades. That's right, you're not technically legal. You hadn't been, you meant to have a financial license or something? Yes, like exactly. Yeah. And you're not allowed to do trades unless uh, you can do trades yourself, and that's how they want you to do it. That they're not meant to give you the the trades. They're not meant to give you any advice. Yes, on what of you course. Trade. But he uh -huh. was giving me the trades every day. Then you decided to check out your Bitcoin account. Yes. And you found you couldn't get into it. Correct? I couldn't get into it. So I got a 14-year-old, the son of my um, hairdresser, and he got in in five minutes. He said the money isn't there. So when she lost all her money from Bitcoin, I asked my son. Actually, he's very good at computer to help her. So he found out her password and then we are trying to find her money back and everything. I asked her to share the picture of a Benny and then when I see his face, he looks like criminal. I couldn't even trust even with the picture. It was really, really like not trust, like very sneaky eye and then she trusts him so much. At this point, I knew that he had scammed all of my money. Mm. And I thought, what the hell do I do? Go to my ex-husband and say I've been a complete clown and an idiot. We just altered all my outgoings immediately. Make sure your outgoings are low. Mm. My friend um, was incredible at helping me, the hairdresser, and she changed everything in, in an hour. We started making a plan to help her. So I told her to record everything with Benny, what is a conversation it is and same time my son started hacking his identity or identification and looking for family and Google and everything and then we started to unravel the whole evil actually network in Cyprus basically we discovered it goes back to major hotels in Israel it's like a spider going into Germany into Australia and it's everywhere. What, different companies, shell companies, yes, all exactly. owning each other. But... Yes, all owning each other um, through a bedsick company. And everybody in it is told to be charming. So they're all very charming, but they're scammers. Once you discovered your Bitcoin was ripped off, so at that stage, obviously, you were saying to Benny, where is it? Yes. And what was he And saying? he was saying he hadn't stolen it. But the thing was, one day I'd ring up um, Bitstamp, was the company and they would ask me my email address all the time and I wouldn't get the right email address. And one day I got a girl, it must be in the middle of the night when I rang up, and she obviously was new and she said to me, yes, I've got two email addresses and one of them is amanda at ripple.com. And as this uh, boy told me to invest in Ripple, I knew it was him. And so I rang him up the next morning and said, it's you, because only you told me to invest in Ripple. Which boy? This wasn't Benny? Yes, this was Benny. Oh, really? I'm not hiding, I'm, t I'm not hiding, I'm not running away. I'm telling you what to do to get some more money back. Your case should be directed to different direction, as I mentioned in our, in our previous yes, conversation. what I'm saying to you is, how, how are they going to pay me back? That's not the problem. Do, problem. They, do they know they've got to pay? Yes, yes. Why did they because do it to me? Can I just say to you, why did they do it to me? Why do you want to do that to me? And it was a long conversations with Jack, my son, and eventually he came clean. But the interesting thing was, was when I photograph of him into the computer, into Google, and another picture came up identical. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was actually my um, hairdresser, who's an amazing detective, and she actually found out the mother of Benny. So we found his brother and then we contact him. And then he was really shocked and then he thought he's going to have a big problem, so he wanted to step back. He doesn't want to involve anything. We found his mother and then we contact her. We explain and everything. It's all her life. Everything is in there. And then she feel really, really sorry for us. Which is very weird. How she found it, I have no idea. But anyway, we found out that he'd used his brother's name by putting the picture in. There was a, his brother's almost identical, but he's better looking. And I thought, my God, this is incredible. And I found out he was 28 and not 40. There you are, girls. 
don't get cons. It's sort of a pity because it could have all been so different. They think they've got a quick amount of money from me, but in the end, they had to pay a third of it back, and I got it back with interest. But of course, I didn't get what I should have got. Sure. How about on the other side, which is possibly more serious, uh, charging illegal rates? The swaps. Yes, they, that's why they pay me back about a third of what I had made. Because remember, they don't sure. give you the upside, sure. they only give you the, the original, the original stake. stake, yeah. exactly. In fact, Benny helped you get the money back, didn't he? Because yes, he would spend hours on the telephone telling me what to do. Because he was terrified of being prosecuted yes. himself. Yes, yes, exactly. That's your case, you need to understand that. And that's what they're willing to give you back money. Okay. That's what I'm trying to tell you, and that's one out of three, and you have two. So he, he didn't tell me how the companies worked. My son worked that out, and it's very convoluted. I've signed all sorts of documents saying I, I can't really go into who is involved. That's what's so demanded, and they, they will get scared for that. Yes. I'm telling you. Because they took away from me all the paperwork regarding you. What? Because okay. they took everything away from me. From who? From me. Why? William White, this close information. They've taken it away from you? Yeah, of course. Yeah, but you Don't know it's access. backwards anyway. Yeah, but I need to look at it to confirm. Okay. Yeah. But needless to say, it's a huge hotel company in Israel, and they're all related to each other. Then makes some sense. And how I got the money back was really by going to Benny's brother and saying what had happened to me. When he didn't pay me back, I rang up the mother. And then finally we got the money back. When I rang up the mother, okay, I then got the money back. The back end is legit. You, there is nothing not legit there. I, I saw in my own eyes. And that's what they're willing to give you back money. Okay. But then think about it. You then get scammed by the lawyer. Of course, he wanted to scam me left, right and centre. The first amount of money that I got back from Benny, he, he was a, it was a shame because he again was likeable. They're all exactly the same person, intermingled into crooks. Now, have you got a weakness for crooks? Absolutely not. My radar normally out there is to say everybody's a crook. Don't trust anyone. Benny was a terrible thief, but other people have ripped uh, you off. Yes, exactly. Um, there was a person who took my money from a house in Los Angeles. Mm. That was very easy for him to do. He just took it from a bank and he masked my um, identity, yes, and took the money. He again paid me back, but it took him six years. So in essence, they all of them mucked up my finances. And, and there was a chap who um, helped you with the film you were making who turned out to be a complete Oh my well. God, he was even the best. He said he, he didn't have a piano, that he needed a piano, so I got him a cheapy piano. And uh, um, he went round the world with me. I was making a film on my life. I didn't really trust him either. I don't trust any of them. But because of the way we are nowadays, we're to take people at face value yeah. rather than our instincts. Okay, I knew these people were probably no good. But there's two things in you. One is you like outsiders. Second is you like people that no one else likes. <laughs> and possibly maybe you like um, shady people a bit as well for some reason, just, just because they're different. I think I like different people. But this... And maybe, I don't want to be around them. shady because if you think about it, I don't stay around them at all. No. But you want to give people a chance yes. who other people wouldn't give a chance Yes, to. exactly. Why is this? What's, What's in it? Wh because why, I think the world is very from? difficult and very unfair and some people are made to be thieves that might not be thieves. You know, we're all given this terrible judgement but from would, a very early age. Would you say you'd had any success with outsiders and misfits? And... I would say that the, the three bad misfits that I helped and I was nice to and they helped me were all a disaster. And I would actually say that they all have one thing in common. They try to be incredibly charming. You will not catch them out being horrible to you. And that's a very pleasant thing. Someone who's never awful is possibly not believable. Exactly. And they're all quite good looking. They're not too good looking. The man who helped me with my film, I've, I met him on Match.com. In fact, I employed most of my film that I made from Match.com because I didn't know where to get a crew from. Mm. Of course, I met other people that were helpful. So they weren't, it wasn't all a bad experience. It's just that, you know, for instance, the man that helped me make the film was watching porn 
during the time he was meant to be making the film. There was no loyalty. And I would say that the problem is with all of this is that, you know, I've helped other people. I've helped a young man do uh, uh, literature festivals and things like that because I like them. Mm. And then they turn on you. You know, when you're no use to them anymore, they'll turn on you. I mean, them. obviously they want your dough. Uh, yes, I'm living on my own of a dodgy age. And of course it's dangerous. But do you think that they can sniff this out somehow? Yes, of course. I think they go and look for you. Because the funny thing is, the alternative is, there's a woman we both know, but who once asked me to write a book under her name. And when I told her the price, I never heard another word from her again. Um, but you're not like that. Maybe it's wiser to be a bit of a bitch. I think so. But then you don't have any friends. How important is friendship? Um, it's very important to me, OK? Yeah and I like to trust people. I think I've grown up since this time. You know, I have been with somebody for 20, 30 years. Yeah. I was far too trusting. And of course now there's a problem that I'm not trusting anymore. You know, it was a, it was a four year period of my life. I wanted to be s successful with something that I wasn't very knowledgeable about or indeed successful with. Although when you were first team, you met some uh, Goldman Sachs bankers who said, oh, come and work for us, you seem very good at this. Yeah, well, they did offer me a so job. Are there honest platforms? Could you do it yes, again you or can. would you never want to go near it? Well, I've lost my nerve. It's a very tricky business. It's very, very exhausting because when the markets are up, everybody's happy. I once worked for an oil trader and when the markets were doing well, everybody was happy. And when they were doing appallingly badly, everybody was impossible. This is the same world. And I don't really like the change in temperament. It's not good for me because I need to be kept at room temperature. <laughs> and I used to get little billet d'oeuvre from this man. You know, he used to write to me all the time. He was quite convincing that he cared about me. I didn't need to have a love story from mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be having an interesting life, really. Well, even when you were kind of unravelling this whole thing, getting to the bottom of it, you stayed on tremendously kind of funny and matey terms with him. Was that a tactic or do you actually like the guy? I don't know if I like him. I, I don't dislike him mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. I'm disappointed that that's the route he chose, the, the route of um, dishonesty. But also, actually, when you fall out with people, you're very keen to make up again. I always think when you've had an argument with somebody, you know the other side of their character and they don't muck you around anymore. Okay. In fact, actually, probably what is a very good idea is to make somebody fall out with you in the first week and then they end up liking you because they know your limits. Yeah, and right. we all have foibles and I think that we need to know each other's limits. And there are limits and theft is one of them. Yeah. And, so and you know, you can choose an easier route than theft. Because the worst thing is you're caught out, which both these people were. They think I'm not going to go after them. I go after everybody. How you know? about the chap who helped you with the film, though? He got away. Not really. No, he didn't, because he wanted to remain friends, despite slagging me off or whatever he wanted to do. He also wanted to be a part of it. I don't think he really disliked me. He was more playing with my personality. I don't give a damn about this. I'm way past this. So now, can, do you think you're going to be better in future at spotting con? I was always good at spotting them. But that's the other problem. I knew this man was a con man the first day that right. I met him, the one in Cyprus. I used to always say to him, you're a con man. Oh. I, I, it's not that I don't recognize them. It's that I must not give people chances. And that's the way it is. Do you dislike being more cautious now? The element of risk is exciting, but the drama that comes with yeah. it is not, ex it's not exciting. And uh, it's put me in jeopardy. It's uh, made my family furious. It's had consequences which are not nice to deal with. And all from trying to do something that I wasn't necessarily good at. Although my son said, you did actually make that money. But unfortunately, he thinks the platform isn't real. So the money maybe never even went through a bank? Because of well, all he reckons, but he had no proof that it goes from the platform into a series of companies like this and gets laundered. Sorry and then they, with the swap charges yeah. mounting up, you become zero. Right. And right. they steal all the money. Now, do you think that you said you wanted to know how to get rich quick? Do you think that you can't get rich quick? I think you can get rich quick, but by God, if you don't, you might lose all your money, right. okay? It's like putting everything on 
the number 13 in the race at, at Ascot. It's not very different. Do you don't think this was to do with greed in any way, thinking, wow, I'm making no, 20 No, I think what it was more was to, to keep myself in my old age, not be any hassle to my children. Of course, I ended up being more hassle <laughs> than ever. <laughs> well, I think we have to thank Jack. I, my son was amazing. So what he learned was that now he can find everybody's companies. He's got an amazing brain. He really should be an investigative detective because he knows how to find everybody's companies and he sees how their brain works and he can adapt to their brain to find the companies involved. He knows exactly who stole this money. He knows how it happened and he was very happy to go and get him. Unfortunately, I had to sign a disclosure. I didn't actually make any profit in the end. I just came back with roughly what I put in. An adventure, but a, a huge hassle. Yeah, I was minus £300,000 in the end, but they really mucked my money around. With all these things, you have to know the chain in each story and who they really are. In that case, I didn't trust him an inch either. I didn't like him, he wasn't Benny. Right. And right. I thought he was extremely slimy. I had to use him because I was living in England and uh, Los Angeles at the same time. He went and bought his own house with my money. I mean, you know, it's unbelievable. And I introduced him to a man, because he was gay, and he stole money from that man and he stole double the money. By now he'll probably stole triple. <laughs> now, do you think some of your actions or reactions came from you'd be married to an incredibly successful businessman where you had as much pocket money as you wanted and you were probably very generous with it. Do you think you're still carrying on that life a bit? I think so. And you're over that now? Yes, I am quite careful and I'm not interested in the same things, you know. Yeah. I'm a different age. I don't think that money is a necessity, but it's not very interesting. It's only interesting that it can buy our health. Like if we get sick tomorrow, we can go to the doctor. Yeah. If we need a holiday, we can have a holiday. I'm not into big boats, luxury holidays. I'm really not this type of person. Because you've been married to this very, very financially successful man, do you think you wanted to give other people a chance? Yes, that's exactly it. When so, yeah. I met him, he was 22, you know? Mm. And it was fun to build something together. And I like building things with other people, but they might not have the same honesty Ooh. towards you. But also you can be a legal businessman who does some pretty amazingly shocking things, or you can be an illegal businessman who does criminal things. I mean, just because you're legal doesn't mean you're nice. Exactly, it? absolutely. And I suppose just because you're illegal doesn't mean you're nasty. No, exactly. Unfortunately, they take your money with them. Exactly. I was scammed in minor ways, like um, with my car when I went to Los Angeles. The man who took uh, that um, was um, pimping my car, pimping my car, ran off with 12 grand. A PR guy went off with 10,000 who was meant to help me with my house. They were smallish amounts, but it was also disgusting. Los Angeles, you have to have eyes at the back of your head. You know, they might have thought that I was difficult. Well, I can tell you, I was only difficult because they had, did, had done terrible things. Mm. Uh, not terrible things, just not very interesting. Everybody's on the scam. You know, you once said to me in Los Angeles, does anyone work round here? Mm. Well, mm. does anyone scam round here is really what <laughs> well, they're really up to. Indeed. But it's all man on woman, well obviously you're a woman, but it's all man on woman crime. This, yes, it? is it, yes. Have any women ever behaved badly? Women behave badly in very different ways. You know, women behave badly because they get jealous or something isn't to their liking or they think that you've done something mean to them. With the exception of Benny, who's an amusing character for all of these things, but how much of it do you think is about resentment? Do you think these people like women? I can imagine Benny would, but I don't know about that. I don't know. I think they're, they're, they don't they're like women, gay. no. <laughs> no, well, we can't say that. So what have we learned? We, I think we've learned that what Amanda often says, a favourite saying of hers is, no good turn goes unpunished. Don't take a chance on people because they'll probably let you down. I don't think that would be her way of seeing it though. I'm sure she's going to have many more criminal adventures ahead of us.